uh, chili uh, dinner, I guess you would say, uh, if I would uh, preach this morning. And uh, I guess Brother Jeremy Roberts is preaching tonight. And uh, well, I'm going to break it again. And then he has me preach this morning. And, uh, and I really didn't have a lot on my mind. Uh, but uh, yesterday evening after I got home, and I felt like the Lord directed us this way. And uh, But in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, and verse 11, the Bible says that he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And go back to the book of Exodus chapter 17. <clears throat> we'll start reading at verse 8. It says, And then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose you us out, men, and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew heavy, and he took a, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on, and Aaron and, and Hur stayed up his hand, uh, hands, the one on the one side and the one on the other, and on the other side. And his hands were steady until they're going down to the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. And uh, like I said, as Sparks asked me last night if I'd preach this morning, and and, uh, and I went home, and, and this is, uh, which most people know October, is, uh, they put it as, aside as Pastor Appreciation Month, and, and uh, if you listen to King of Kings Radio, all month long people call in and, and uh, recognize their pastors and, and different things, and and, uh, and I thought that's fine. And last yesterday, we've done some things to recognize Brother Sparks. A lot of times we have a, a special preacher to come in and have a special service. And we're not having all of that. But, uh, but I thought as I began to think last night after I got home and, and began to think, uh, and I felt like the Lord led me to these scriptures. And I've preached from them before. Others have. And, and, uh, but uh, uh, but in, in Ephesians, he said... Uh, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And, uh, and I thought, uh, as we all know, that word pastor there comes from the same word as a shepherd. Right. Right. Uh, and, uh, which is uh, the leader or the gatherer of the flock. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and as a leader, uh, many times uh, that shepherd will have to stand between the flock and the enemy. Uh, as we can look back at David's example in the word as, uh, as he went down to fight and went down to where the, the war was going on and, and he came up to uh, and saw Goliath there defiling the armies of God and, and uh, something began to rise up in David and, and uh, when, he, when he told Saul he would go uh, Saul said you know how, how could you go you're just a child and, and, but David was a shepherd and David began to tell Saul the examples of, of the situations whenever the enemy came against his flock or against his father's flock and, and how he slew the bear and how he slew that lion and, and how he came in uh, as a deliverer for that flock. And, uh, and I thought, as I begin to think about that this morning, and, and, uh, and I thought, uh, uh, here we find, as we go over into the book of Exodus, and, and we find uh, Amalek, and, and he's come up against Israel. Uh, once again, we find them uh, uh, in battle, and, and uh, Moses goes and he tells Joshua to, to choose them an army and uh, to go down and fight, and, and then he says, "But I'm going to go up on the mountain, and I'm going to take the rod of God." And I thought, and, and, and he knew that there was a reason he had to be there because he knew that he had to offer praise to God. And I thought as we begin to have this service this morning and, and as the Spirit of God began to move and, and as we begin to feel that praise come by. Amen. Brother, you may mention, no, he didn't 
shout, but he said whenever the Spirit of God began, began to move, began to raise his hands. What was he doing? He's offering praise, offering sacrifice of himself to God. And I thought it's important that we learn to offer ourselves to God. Offer ourselves as a sacrifice. <laughs> but I thought the, here we find Amalek and, uh, going against the army and, and we find Aaron and Hur, or some people call it Hur, uh, going uh, with Moses upon the mountain or upon the hill. Uh, and the Bible says that, uh, uh, like I said, when Moses began to hold up his rod and hold up the rod of God, that Israel began to prevail. They began to overtake. Uh, but Moses was a natural man. Uh, he had uh, afflictions just like we did. Uh, he began to get tired just like we do. And, and he began to hold up his uh, uh, arms. Uh, uh, he began to get weary. He began to get heavy. And, and his arms began to get frail. And they began to, uh, to, to come down. And, and then the enemy would begin to prevail. How about because he needed to offer that sacrifice. And then offer a praise to God. And uh, but the Bible says that uh, uh, we know the story uh, of how uh, uh, Aaron and, and he, uh, her began to uh, uphold the arms of uh, of, of uh, uh, Moses, uh, began to help stay his arms uh, to offer him that assistance that was needed to, to be able to prevail against the enemy. And I thought, let's begin to think about this this morning and begin to study into this. And, and uh, 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 several times I stopped and I. And while I was thinking about this, I'm, I'm, I asked Sister Kathy, did, did you, did, have, you, have you noticed this? And, and sometimes, you know, you read things, but then when you get into, you know, one thing about reading, but I thought it's another thing to study. Because yeah. uh, when you're studying, you're allowing the, the, uh, the Lord to teach you and, and reveal things to you. Uh, and, uh, and I thought, uh, but, but I begin to think about that this morning. We, we understand that, uh, uh, that Aaron, he was preached. He was of the tribe of Levi. Uh, he was a Levite. So therefore he was uh, he was one of the priests. And, and so he goes up and he's standing there and as as the priesthood and, and he's there with with uh, with Moses and, and but I begin to wonder, what about her? Uh, he was just simply of the tribe of Judah. Uh, which was a tribe of praise. But then when you go into that tribe of Judah. You find the descendants. You find a little later on, you find David. Right. And then we go on and we find Jesus Christ yeah. coming through that tribe of Judah. Yeah. Okay. So as I begin to think about that this morning, I begin to look into that. Not only did we see the Levitical priesthood uh -huh. standing there and helping hold up the arms of a man of God, right. but we also seen a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ standing on that hill that morning, that day, and holding up the hands of the man of God until the evening come by, and they prevailed and overtook the enemy. Amen. And as I begin to think about that, oh, we have got to be willing to stand and uphold the hands of the man of God. Amen. And uh, I thought that, like that Moses was the one standing between them and the enemy. Yes, Joshua was the one down there leading the, the, the army into battle, but it was Moses that was standing. And a lot of times we look, and, and I'm just as guilty as anyone else. Uh, we look, and, and we see the enemy coming, and, and we look at the pastor and say, well, what are you going to do? Uh, what, what are we going to do about this situation? But Joshua was the one down in the battle. Joshua was the one on the, the footman, if you would, the one that was taking on the, the enemy. But it was a man of God that was standing up on the mountain, lifting up the rod of God. Right. And I thought we need to be willing to stand up and we need to be willing to take on the enemy. I thought it's easy whenever the enemy comes against our family to be willing to fight. But what about when the enemies come against Brother Yule's family? Right. What about when the enemies come against Brother Bill, Brother Jim, Brother Harold? I thought, are we still willing to fight? I thought, and having someone to help lift up the hands of the man of God, right. we're able to overcome right. the enemy. Right. I thought, I, you know, that a lot of times when you begin to think about the things, and, and uh, like I said before, you know, uh, when the enemy attacks my children, when he attacks my grandchildren, when he attacks my, my family, I thought I, I'm quick to begin to call out on God. I begin to, I'm quick to begin to search and say, Lord, what, Lord, 
uh, look where I'm at. Look at the situations that I'm in, Lord. But what about, like I said, what about your family? I need to look and say, but Lord, look at the situation they're in. Lord, help me. And I thought, be the footman to fight the enemy. All right. And I thought, you know, the, the, the man of God don't have the strength to always to be the one fighting. Amen. And I thought, he's also got to be the one that is standing between us Amen. and the enemy. Uh -huh. I thought, you know, uh, with me, uh, and uh, I've said before, I, I did not want to preach. Uh, I remember. Uh, you know, I, I had been feeling the call, and I remember the night that I was in church over here in the old building, and, and I could probably take you up on the platform and show you about where the pew was sitting. The night of the uh, yule that I broke down, and I began to cry like a baby uh, because I felt the call of God on my heart so strong that I knew that I couldn't resist it. It was either follow after God or or get out. I mean, it's just that's just where I was at. And uh, and I, I thought I didn't want to preach. Because I had grown up in a pastor's home. I knew those nights of agony. Amen. I thought uh, where we lived or where on Wiseman Town. And when you went down the, the hall, you got to the end of the hall. My bedroom was on the right. Brother Sparks and Sister Sparks was on the left. And the only thing between us was just a couple of sheets of plywood, uh, drywall. That was it. And, uh, and I thought I can remember many night laying that man woke up and, and hear him crying. And agonizing with God. A lot of times he would leave the bedroom and he'd even go up to the living room. But I could still hear him crying and agonizing and talking to God because of the burden was so great. And uh, I remember with me just being a, a young child and, and some, and then even in my, my teen, in my late teen years, I would stand standing there and, and I could hear him crying and hear him calling out to God. And, and, and a lot of times, they were standing under the load, under the burden, all by themselves. All right. And I, and, I, and I feel like we've got a wonderful congregation here. Sure, and I, thought, I know that we've got people that help. But I thought sometimes we just need to be reminded that we've got to help stay in arms. Amen. Stay in the arms. And I thought, uh, uh, you know, when it, when it, many times we are, we're, we're fighting a battle, but as long as we keep the hands of the man of God no, lifted up, Amen. I thought we can prevail. Although, you know, it didn't mean that the man of God was weak. No. Uh, that he was no longer a good uh, leader when he grew tired. It was just simple that he was a simple, uh, a common man. Amen. And then he needs help. Amen. Although, uh, you know, uh, Moses was just a, he was still a leader. Uh, Moses was, uh, was was called with God. He was, he was dedicated. Moses, uh, whenever he, <coughs> he came to for him to leave her, we know how. He went up on the mountain and, 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 and he died. And the angels of God, he was such a special person that, that the angels buried Moses. And I thought, uh, but yet he was, he grew tired. He grew weary. And I thought, uh, you know, and, I, and I've seen a lot of times when people want to rail and they come against the man of God. I thought we can look over the book of Numbers, chapter 12 of, uh, of Aaron and Miriam. Whenever they came out and and they spoke out against Moses because of his wife. That's right. And uh, the Bible says that Miriam was uh, was smitten. She was white as white with leprosy. Right. Uh, because of she went against uh, uh, the man of God. And you know, and as I looked at that this morning, I thought, well, you know, it seemed like Aaron got by scot free, but uh, he still recognized the fact that they had spoken out against God's man, Amen. the one that was called. You know, and it was easy for him. That was the brother. Uh, you know, and, and look, you know, oh, that's just that's just Moses, but he was still the man of God. Amen. And all oh, it's easy for us to look at him. And I thought, you know, and, and that's why me, uh, and Brother Sparks is my my dad. And, and I thought I still would. I, I don't like to get up from from the uh, the platform and recognize him as dad. Uh, I like to recognize him as, as Brother Sparks because he's the man of God. Amen. He's the shepherd of our of this flock, and he's a leader. And I thought it's important that we we understand. And, and realize the importance of upholding his hands. And I thought, but even more than that, sometimes we just simply need to stay the hands of one another. Sometimes the flock's hands gets heavy. And we need to help one another. And, and I thought, you know, and, and, and I thought it's important that we reach out to one another, to help one another, be there for one another. I thought it, it means a lot. And, and, and I thought, uh, in Psalms uh, 105 and verse 11, 
It says, uh, saying to thee, will I give the land of Canaan and the lot of your inheritance. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it, when they went from the nation and to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do, to, to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved the kings for their sakes. <clears throat> and God has placed everything in a specific order. From the church to the home, the pastor is the head of the church, and the, and the, and the man is the head of the home. And I thought God has placed everything in a specific order. And I thought he, he's, he's planned it that way for a reason. And I thought, uh, uh, and I thought, and, and as we get into the role and the position that we are as saints of God, I thought we need to stay in the hands of the man of God. Amen. Be willing to help carry the load. I thought, you know what? A lot of times we, uh, we, 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 if we're not careful, we'll take more on to us than what we're able right. to handle. Uh, we'll take on more responsibility than what we should. I said, there, you know, there where I work, I've got, uh, I don't know how many is working under me right now. Uh, there's right around 30. And, uh, you know, but Jim, I, I can go, whenever I see something needs to be done, I can go get somebody and I say, I need you to do this. And they, they will do it. And sometimes they might grumble and complain. But they ain't going to do it. But if I'm not careful, rather than listening to the grumbling and complaining, right. I can see something needs to be done and, and I will do it. Mm -hmm. I've got all this stuff that I need to be doing or somebody don't show up and rather than pull somebody from here, I'll say, well, I'll fill in over here for a while. And I thought whenever I do that, then I've got all this other stuff that's being left undone. Right. Because I have chosen that's right. to take on this rather than Take care of this. That's right. And uh, and I thought it's easy for us to do that. Yep. And I thought, but as I, I realized as a leader and as a manager, that I've got the specific things that I have to do. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, and, and I've had people that work for me before, and, and uh, I had one guy tell me one time, Will you get mad when somebody calls in sick? No, I don't get mad when somebody calls in sick. But when it's the same person that calls in every week, with an excuse, then yeah, it aggravates me because I know I've got to find a way to fill that job. Yep. And, and I thought you were looking for dependability. Right. And I thought God is no different. Right. He's looking for Amen. dependability. Amen. Sister Kathy was teaching Sunday school this morning and uh, she made mention of, you know, a lot of people have church once a week. And uh, I feel like that if situations arose where I had to, I feel like I've got enough God in my life that I don't think I'd backslide if I only came to church once a week. But I realize that I need more Amen. of the fellowship Amen. of the people of God Amen. and that time of worship. I need more of that than just a couple hours a week. Amen. I thought I need more of it than just one day a week. Amen. But I need all the fellowship that I can get Amen. with like-minded people. I thought because we still and we, we deal in a world and we, we go to work and we deal with people that are not like minded at all. I thought some of the things and, and, and I'll be in the car and, and you know the little Equinox has got the hands free phone deal over the radio and, and I'll be driving down the road and, and some of the guys can call me if Sister Kathy's in the car and I'll hit the little X on it and refuse the call because I know what kind of language they're going to use. Not that they, it's just, it's just their everyday vocabulary. Right. And I don't want to submit her to that. Right. And, uh, and I thought, and that's what we deal with every day. Yeah. And we get our minds bombarded with that every day. Yeah. So we need to come to the house of God right. so we can get with like-minded people Amen. so that we can have that strength to worship God oh, and to help stay the hands of the man of God, Amen. that we can overcome the enemy that's after our souls, yeah. after the souls of our loved ones and our children. Yeah. I thought they come get us a song this morning. <clears throat> I hope I've helped you. Very well. But I thought any instance that you look at in the
in the Bible, you can go back into the Old Testament, and I realize we've got a lot of churches, and, and uh, they don't want to use the Old Testament at all. That, well, that's that's we're, we're the New Testament, and we are. But I thought I could look in about any situation in this Bible and go back in that Old Testament, and I can find Jesus Christ Amen. anywhere you look. Because it all led all the way up to him. It all, it all leads up to Jesus Christ. Amen. And it all leads up to where we are right now. Amen. Where we're at right now, we can find an example for that. Any book of this Bible, any verse, we can find something to help us where we are now. And I thought, I praise God that I'm serving such a mighty God that's seen me from the beginning of time and snowed my situation. Right. And I thought he gave us an illustration that if we can keep the hand of the God, the, the hands of the man of God lifted up and keep us from being so weary and, and heavy laden, I thought we can be overcomers. Amen. Uh, we can see great things. I, I, I we was over at the chili supper last night, and I can remember a time when we would have a chili supper and you barely had any room to sit down over there. Right. Because everybody's families would come. And, and I realized COVID changed the world. It did. I mean, even we, we went to Cracker Barrels Friday night, I believe it was. You can't even park in front of the restaurant no more uh, because everything there is lined up for carryout. That only happened after COVID. Right. Uh, anything you do is, is uh, pre-2020. Uh, after COVID. And I thought, because it changed a lot. And I understand that. And I thought, but more than that, we've allowed it to change church. We've allowed it to change the way we worship, the way we do things. And I thought, I don't want nothing to change the way that I serve my God. Amen. I want to serve him in the beauty of holiness and in the way that he's ordained. As they come against the song, Let's come to this altar and pray. Can we stand all over the house? If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life, and you felt that pull today, 